right, my friends, good afternoon here. Brian with Vet Source back. Sorry, I'm cleaning off the camera there. Um, today, we're going to be looking real quick at uh, our 71 454, not 71, I'm sorry, 72 454 Corvette Stingray project that we dragged out of the dirt last week. Um, if you missed that video, there's a link right there at the top. You can kind of catch that video too as I drag this out of its grave, dirt grave. And um, for those of you that saw it already, you will notice that there was no front suspension on the car. Actually, the front suspension was there, but what they did was they left it laying in the dirt. Um, unfortunately, it was upside down. Uh, and then the back end, it kind of sunk into the ground. So this car really had the worst corrosion I'd ever seen as far as the rally rims. This is one of the front ones here that uh, was upside down in the dirt. And you can see not much left. And of course, the lug nuts are actually just welded to the studs there. Um, this one actually came off. I mean, I haven't got the wheel off yet, but we're working on it. So I've actually got those lug nuts to come off of there. Um, we're gonna be working on, actually, I'm not gonna do anything with this one yet. <laughs> the, this one's not coming off here no matter what I do. I can guarantee that right now. So this will be my, fourth locked up wheel and of course here no front suspension here I, I think and they might have thought they were going to start from the front and work their way back but not sure what the high school kids or high school teacher was thinking when they were doing it but I'm sure they had a plan it just you know stalled and of course this is the other one that was laying in the dirt so I can't even get the wheel off of there I have to break it apart in a different manner so getting this on the trailer while it was challenging um, wasn't the worst thing in the world. Um, I basically utilized floor jacks, uh, really high six foot or six ton floor jacks. Sorry for the motorcycle there guys, I'm sitting on the freeway. Six ton floor jacks and uh, jacked the car up and just basically backed the trailer up all the way to where the rear differential was. Then use the floor jack to jack the back end up and use the come along in the last little bit. So getting it on the trailer, was actually a lot easier than getting it off the trailer. Um, so what I'm doing now is we're gonna go ahead and reinstall control arms up here in the front. I've actually put these in already. These are the original control arms that I was able to save off the car uh, with some of the hardware I've got here that I just keep normally. So that way at least I'll get uh, two rollers in the front. I'll be able to actually steer it. I'm going to hook up the, the steering linkage to it. And I'm probably going to free, see if I can free up that back one there. So that way I can roll this thing off the trailer because uh, the back wheels are locked up right now. But at least with the front wheels rolling, I'll be able to get somewhere with this. And um, there's no motor. Motor, of course, is sitting right there. So this being a roller, it's a little bit lighter, easier to do. So what I'll do here is detail. I'm going to throw these back in you can see I've actually put these control arms back in here again uh, I've got to put the spindle up front on here just so I can roll and then that's just sitting right, right there for now so I'm just gonna put these back on I'll show you guys real quick uh, what's involved in it. it's not too terrible I'm gonna get set up with my tools here and I'll be back in a second to show you what's going on I'll be back right back okay we've got our basic uh, four components we need to get this suspension back on here got an upper control arm here We've got a lower control arm here. We got a nice furniture dolly there We've got our spindle with a rotor and studs or uh, lug nuts or studs and lug nuts and a spring We'll see if I can get the spring to go in here um, now the top Parts as I'm losing my mind. I can't find my bolts. So there we go the top bolts for the upper control arm are not terribly complex really these are a through bolt with a serrated a pressed in head so that they'll actually stay in there um, but of course defeating my purposes I put one of these on here already so what I'm gonna do is take that one off and of course pretty much already decided I'm not going to use this frame just because so I'm gonna put
put these here. We get this wire, this vacuum hosing out of the way. And move this back into position here. And then run these through right here. Famous last words there. And with the press fit in there, they should stay for me. Keep the proper alignment. Yeah, maybe. There we go. There's that one. There we go. All right, so that's the upper control arm. That's all it takes to get on there. And there's a couple of screws right here that go on there. Now again, guys, this is just a temporary. Um, this is just so I can roll the thing around without having to drag it on this furniture dolly everywhere. And all that's gonna be there is just to keep it from moving too much. And I'll run those down in a few minutes. So let me get set up and I'll show you guys how this lower control arm goes in here and I'll be right back. All right, guys, after looking at this a little bit closer, I'm gonna actually ditch the idea of throwing my spring back in here simply because got a lot of tension on it being a big block AC car so it's got the really heavy duty springs and I don't have any weight in the front end to bear down on it or even to bother with it uh, once I install it so it's not really going to do me much good plus it's just a pain in the butt if I want to get that in there so I went ahead and we put this lower control arm in lower control arm on these C3s is actually C2s and C3s has one large bolt here in the back and then we've got another two in the front, which is an odd setup. It's got two in the front, two in the leading edge, and one in the trailing edge. And then the up at the top, it's got a very interesting nut plate that goes onto the frame rail, the saddle, and that's what holds it in place. So you can see one that's out right there. That's what that looks like. So this will be for your front, your lower control arm, and I have the bolt on this side for the lower another one out but the bolts on the other one have a very specific head marking and that's what these look like right here so those have got that specialized mark and of course if you're restoring them and going for all the uber awards and all the other good stuff you want these i think these are the anchor bolts i think let me look at them no, but these are just those bolts that they use there. So I'm going to finish bolting up that lower control arm and then we'll get to that spindle and I'll show you how that spindle goes on. I'll be right back. Okay, there's one side done, which it did not want to cooperate, but usually rusty stuff doesn't. So at least though now we've got a complete semi-functional suspension, at least for rolling the car around goes, because now I can move it at least on the front end. So I'm not gonna go through the other side. It's gonna be pretty much the same as this. And some of these camera angles are kind of hard for me to get. So what I will do tomorrow though, uh, morning, is uh, come back out here and I'm gonna break down or break apart these rear wheels here. At least this one, I'm pretty sure I can get this one to come off if I coax it enough. And then I'm probably, I'm gonna just pull the half shafts out of it if I can without cursing and screaming too much because that'll at least remove some of the resistance to the differential and I'll get this brake caliper off of this one and I'll show you guys how that goes so that'll get them to finish up um, at least for today I'm losing daylight but I'll be back tomorrow to finish up this video and uh, I'll be back then okay hang tight guys all right guys good afternoon we're back again to finish up our uh, removal or attempted removal of our 72 big block 454 Corvette from the trailer that uh, picked up last week if you missed that first video there there's a link up at the top of the video so you can see that one where I dragged this thing out of uh, red on red automatic car AC power steering power brakes pretty much fully loaded a really really neat car and you don't see red on red 454 cars very often of course i'm a big block freak so uh, the chance to have one uh, in the inventory here is always good so uh first part of this video what we did was we went ahead and uh put front suspension back on it because 
the high school shop class that decided to work on the car uh, tore a lot of things apart and inexplicably took the front suspension completely out of it and uh, then of course you couldn't roll it anywhere so we went ahead and put that all back together I didn't bother to put the spring back in you can see why that thing is sitting so low because I don't need to try to bother to compress that big block spring while it's on the trailer and uh, furthermore um, all I want to do is be able to make this roll so what we're gonna do today is I got this rim this was the only back rim that the lug nuts were still intact you can see though this was sitting in the dirt so it actually rusted right through that rally rim now my other one here to recap there's no way I can't get this one off um, the lug nuts are seriously just welded fused to the, the studs rusted through so I'm just leaving this one alone for the moment but what I'm hoping I can do is I've got two good rollers in the front these will roll for me bearings are good on these hopefully if I can get this one to roll then uh, I'll be able to at least get it to roll back off the trailer see it's actually still moving not as bad as it would be so today what's gonna happen is well first off let me back up at least with the wheel off I can a little more closely see this frame and I can tell you straight up you know I'm gonna be doing another video next week or two about assessment of the frame of the car I'm not even gonna bother to use this frame because there's this much heavy scale on it as soon as you start blasting it you're gonna find weak spots in it and it's just not worth it especially a car this rare or desirable so right now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our friendly PBT blaster and we're gonna see if we can't get these brake shoes out of here and at least release some of the tension here uh, in the drag and then that way maybe we can get this rear wheel spinning and it may do it for me we'll see so um, get this cotter pin out funny thing this cotter pin really doesn't look nearly as corroded as the rest of it so we'll get that cotter pin out of there now these calipers on these Corvettes what I just took out there was a a, a, a keeper pin because what this are a keeper cotter pin because what these have is a pin if I can get this one to cooperate which it probably won't let me get my hammer what it does is the pin is what holds your brake pads in place on these rear calipers so if you've never played with one of these before that's what they do hmm, okay all right so this one it looks like it's not gonna come loose which I'm not surprised so what I'm gonna do is go grab my torch real quick guys and heat this up put a little heat on it and I'll be right back stand by all right we've got our torch here our favorite firm zomatic tool we're gonna heat this bad boy up quite a bit see if we can't get some movement out of it it's been in there for quite a while but of course when you're dealing with rusty old parts the burn zomatic torch pretty much your best friend you don't want to get the yellow one that's a little bit too hot uh, that's used to kind of sweat copper pipes and remove them uh, this one's good just to get everything loosened up and heated up so that you can get in there and I'm kind of just dousing this as much as I can so I can get in there get this done of course set the brakes on fire we'll have a whole other problem there so all right let's see what happens here so I'm gonna turn that off and let's see if it'll cooperate on camera at least See if I can get a good grip on this, guys. Not much to work with here. Hmm. Okay. All right. So it moved a little bit there for me. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have to two-hand this. So let me work on this pin real quick. And I'll be right back with you guys. And I'll show you how to get these brake calipers and pads off of here. Hang on. All right. It looks like that's gonna get it there. Got our, our 
vice grips on it and there it goes so that retaining pin is the one on the c3s that holds the calipers in through the top now when you buy a new caliper set or a rebuild you'll get a new pin so you don't need to worry about saving that old rusty hardware so let's see again if it will cooperate probably not because they've been in here for a while hmm. no so I'm gonna go back to dousing these because this is where these calipers come out at is here at the top and I'm gonna let these sit for just a few minutes so I'll be right back with you guys once I get them started hang tight all right so we're gonna put that flame on there right on that backing plate and see if these will unstick what they're actually stuck to are the pistons on the back side of here you've got a four piston caliper here and with time with age they'll get stuck so not as concerned with the back one yet simply because if I can get the front one loose then I can get a little room to pry it forward so we're going to loosen that up heat that up as much as I can here and let's see what we get all right let's see if that gave me anything at all before I break my screwdriver not much. No. Uh -uh. Wants to move, but it's just kind of stuck in there. So probably gonna have to get these loose off camera, guys. So I'll be right back with you when I get these done. Be right back. All right. Well, those calipers, not calipers, the pads did not want to come out. So what we ended up doing was. Just taking the 5 8 bolts, retaining bolts, out of the back side. Actually, those aren't two terribly bad bolts. They're over here on this mounting pad right here. I'm not going to go too deep into this because I've showed a brake cha caliper change on my uh, Orange Flame Corvette. If you've never seen that, I'll post a, there's actually a link at the top of this video for that. So let's see. I've got those retaining bolts out of here. Let's see if this will come off now with the Punisher. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, let's see here. That one will be coming off. Let's see. Uh, tear up our body here. And get that last piece off of there we think famous last words come on Let's see what it does. there we go all right so now our calipers off and you can see there's quite a bit of sticky in there it wasn't releasing those but that's okay so what we're gonna do just out of curiosity is of course that won't turn for me I couldn't be that lucky, but what we're going to do here too is I may just go ahead, take these half shaft bolts out. And again, you can tell this is an original big block car beside the VIN, the VIN on a 72 can tell you, but you can also see it with those heavy duty caps right there instead of U bolts. I also have a video detailing those I'll put a link at the top here for that and you can see those heavy-duty caps holding the u-joints in and then you can see that rear sway bar it's a big block only item or some of the later cars later 70s got some of that stuff in there so let me work on this for a few more minutes and I'll get back to you guys in a minute hang on all right back again to finish up our ordeal here of breaking loose rims and adding suspension to the 72 big block 454 car uh, where we finished up when I cut loose here a second ago was we were going to be working on or we were continuing to work on 
this rear um, brake assembly to free it up and what I had to do again I apologize off camera just because I couldn't one hand it was uh, get my tools back in here I was able to release that entire parking not parking brake but the um, what am I trying to say? The caliper, the brake caliper assembly off of here. And then I've spent the last uh, hour or so beating that uh, um, brake rotor off of there. Now a curious thing about Corvettes that people may not know is you'll have your traditional caliper goes right here. I'm pretty sure I've got that center in the back of my truck. And then inside the rotor, Corvettes actually have brake shoes. Um, which is an oddity that they kept all the way up until 87. 88 was when they switched over to getting rid of these. Now this is your parking brake assembly. So the parking brake, you can see the cable right there. Sorry for the road noise today guys, it's May 1st. And Texas is kind of officially opened up, so everybody's out running around. And it's a beautiful day. So you can see here the parking brake assembly sits inside of there. And that's what actually makes the parking brake engage on the inside of the rotor right there. So I was able to free that up, beat that rotor off with uh, some heat and the other. And I'm pretty sure, let's take a look and see. You should be able to, there we go. We got movement. So now what we've got is three out of four wheels will spin on this bad boy and that's all I really need to get this off the trailer so um, what I'm gonna spend the rest of the weekend doing is taking this thing off the trailer backing it into its space where I'll be dismantling the car actually first what I'll be doing is making an assessment of all these lovely parts that I had to go ahead and just stack in here uh, because they literally um, most of it I think was sitting uh, in a shed, it must have been a barn area, um, kind of forgotten because some of it didn't fare too well. It was kind of exposed to elements, you can see that right there, you know, the dirt on it. So what I'm going to do over the weekend, the next video I'll have out for you guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and take all this out and inventory what I have and what's missing. And then what we'll do after that is I'll make an assessment of exactly what it is I'm going to have to be doing on this car. Uh, to get it back up to space, uh, up to speed. Of course, this is going to be my area, my biggest area. I can tell you right here is my windshield frame and cowl section. I'm going to have to be doing a lot of restoration on that, but that's okay. We'll probably start with the mechanical restoration first, chassis and engine and everything else, and we'll go from there. So that's going to wrap this video up for now. Sorry it took a little bit longer than I anticipated probably just because there was a few more steps involved with these rusty parts. But I want to thank everybody as always for sticking around and supporting the videos. Uh, I do like the feedback, obviously. I do enjoy being able to show this to everybody because that's part of the whole car thing is the enthusiasm for saving some of this old stuff. So I'll keep uh, at it and I will check with you guys next week. So everybody have a good weekend, okay? We'll talk to you then. Thanks.